Alright, so this will be a tutorial on how to down patch ahead in time and set up set it up for speedrunning. In most cases, you will want this patch right here, DLC 2 with mods. This is also the case if you're following the lagless tutorial playlists, you will want this patch. So I find the text here to be a little bit misleading, and uh, it doesn't really tell you everything you need to do to set up the game. There are some more things you have to do after you down patch. So I figured I'd make a video just covering the entire process. So to get started, you take this uh, URL, or it's not really a URL, but yeah, whatever. You take this block of text. By the way, the link to this document will be in the description of the video. But you copy that, and then you just paste it in. You hit enter, and it's going to ask you to open Steam, and you just click that. And it will bring you into the Steam console. And then from there, you're going to take this command in the DLC2 with mods part. You're going to copy that text, and you're going to paste it into this console. And you're going to hit enter. And I already did that a few minutes ago here. I'm re-recording because I slipped up my words. And it like will tell you that you input your command, and it will tell you that it is downloading. And it will not show you a progress message. It will not tell you where it's downloading, but all you really got to do is just wait a while uh, and let it finish because it will show another message when it's done downloading. So just uh, wait for that to happen. Uh, while we're waiting though, uh, I'm going to show you here in the, the BoopTube Discord you will want to join in the resources channel. You will want to get this speedrun utilities zip as it contains some things we need to set up our patch. So you want to download this and have that uh, ready uh, for later. You will also need either WinRAR or 7-Zip to unzip this. So make sure you have that uh, program, uh, one of those programs installed. All right, something else you can do while you're waiting. If you're paranoid about your save files, you can find the game in your Steam library. Right-click it, go to Properties and you will find the Steam Cloud option, and you want to turn that off. I think it's fine if you leave it on, but if you're paranoid, you can turn it off. And if you're extra paranoid, you can go to Local Files here and Browse, and go to Add in Time Game, and you'll find a Save Data folder, and you can copy that folder and paste it somewhere else, just to have the saves as a backup if you're afraid of losing them. But anyway, I will cut the video here, and come back when this is done downloading. All right, now that the download is complete, it tells you a little message here. This is Deepa Download Complete, and it does actually tell you your path. I misremembered that. So you will have to navigate to this path on your computer, and I have brought that up. Uh, sorry, I brought... Hello, can I move my file to the other monitor? Thank you. Uh, I've brought that up over here. This is where you will find your installation of the game. And once you see these folders, Hand in Time Game and Engines Binaries, that means this folder outside of it is the game folder. And you should rename this to something descriptive, such as uh, Hand in Time DLC2 Mods. And I personally like to manage my installations by having them all in the same place, which is just in my Steam Apps Common folder. So I have my normal ahead in time current patch, and then I have some other patches installed here, including this one that I just got. You don't have to have them all in here. You do have to have at least one of these current patches. You do not want to get rid of that one, but you can install your other versions of HAD wherever you prefer. So with this version that I just installed, you need to create a file uh, in order to launch this uh, version of the game. Uh, while uh, not having it connected to Steam, you have to create one file, and you have to go into the game folder, go into binaries and Win64, and this is where the exe is located. And what you're going to do here is create a text file. And this is a step that a lot of people 
have uh, messed up on and the shortcut doesn't work because of it so pay close attention so first you're going to turn on file name extensions here this is just generally a good windows setting to have enabled and it's like a lifesaver when managing files for this game specifically if you're on windows 10 here's what the option looks like there should be a view tab somewhere at the top of your file explorer and it'll have a file name extensions checkbox that you want enabled but once you have that on, you should see on the exe here that it will end in .exe. So that's how you check that it's actually enabled. And once you have that, you want to create a text file here and name it steam underscore app ID, like that, all lowercase, with no spaces, just the underscore between steam and app ID. And it should end with .text like that, as long as you have the Windows option enabled. And inside of this file, you want to write 253230 and you're going to save that file and just close it. And this does a magic with Steam that allows you to actually open the game through its exe rather than launching it through Steam. Now when you have that file set up, you're going to find the hideintimegame.exe in the same folder. You will right click that and you want to create a shortcut and you want to name the shortcut whatever you want, something descriptive like hat DLC2 months. And you can have this uh, shortcut wherever you want. Nope, I'm just gonna drag it in here as an example. So you can now uh, launch uh, the game from the shortcut. But before you do that, real quick, there are two very useful things you can add to the shortcut. So you right click the shortcut and you go to properties and here in the target field and not in the start in field in the target field at the very end here you're going to add a space and then a dash and type no verify and then another space and a dash and skip intro and what these do no verify will uh, make it so that the game will not automatically verify your game files in case the game crashes. And skip intro will just skip some of the intro logos when you boot up the game. And every time you return to the title screen, it will also skip those logos. So you just hit OK for that. And now you can launch the game. And you might get a firewall notification, in which case you want to allow it through your private network. Otherwise, online functionality will not work in case you want to use the... Uh, this is a little bit loud. I apologize. But here's my game. And with the game open, first of all, uh, be quiet. Jesus Christ. Uh, with the game open, you can now close it uh, immediately. If you have some mods installed already, you can look at them and like disable some of the mods. Like all chapters unlocked, you definitely don't want that for your speedruns, that's not allowed. Your uh, like online party expressions is useless, etc. You get the point. Well, you can close the game now because there's uh, a few more things you have to do. Alright, so now we're ready to make some changes to the game. This is where the speedrun utility zip that we downloaded comes in. You will want to navigate uh, to a folder called Hat Patcher. And you should be able to find it in here or under Run Essentials. This is uh, just not released uh, at the time of recording. But it'll be in there. It'll either be in here or just in the base folder. It should not be hard to find. So once you find the Hat Patcher thing, it should look like this. There's a bunch of .patch files and a hatpatcher.bat. That's what you're looking for. So once you've found that, you're going to go into your game files uh, through the downpatched version, of course. Find Hat and Time Game and Coked PC. It should be a startup.upk in here. So you want to take all of these files and just drag them in here. So. Through here, you're just going to launch the hatpatcher.bat. And it's going to bring up a window like this. 
and it's a little bit buggy. Uh, it's, it might not list all the options. There should be options all the way down to option E. And if it doesn't show them all to you, just uh, type in a letter that isn't included in that list, including uh, D or E, just like K, for example. And just press enter and press enter again, and now it's showing me all the options. So it should be fine from here. So you can skip to this uh, timestamp shown on screen if you don't want an explanation for what all of these do, and you just want to select the things that you should select. So okay, here's explanations for what all of these do. So the game patches, this is uh, the most important part. The timer effects will uh, fix the inc uh, inconsistency with the in-game timer that makes it not very consistent across uh, different computers. So this community event fix will make it consistent between everyone, and it also happens to make the timing a little bit more generous. So you will want that. This uh, second timer fix is just the same thing, but it's meant for uh, versions that came before Nyakuza. So we're not going to worry about that uh, here. The boot patch, to explain this, uh, DLC 2 with mods, the patch that we're playing on, is meant to emulate a slightly older patch, DLC 2.1. And that patch does not have modding support, which makes it very annoying to run with, because you do not have access to practice tools on that patch, so if you want to to run and then you want to practice, you will have to close the game and open a different version of the game. So you will have to have two versions of the game set up, one for practice, one for running. That's just very tedious and annoying. So the DLC 2 with mods thing is meant to have a centralized patch where you can do both your running and your practice tools. And you also get cosmetic mods on top of that. So this boot patch is just meant to bring the bug that's in 2.1 into this patch because there's very small differences between those patches. And this is like the only big one. So you will want that. That's basically required to run. Additionally, if you're running all timepieces, you'll want this ATP uh, quality of life patch. It uh, changes uh, two things, I believe, that have to do with all timepieces runs that uh, are present in DLC 2.1, but not in DLC 2 with mods. So it, it fixes those inconsistencies. Not required, but recommended. And remove sticker alerts is uh, sometimes when you pick up a timepiece, the game is like a rare sticker alert, and that takes four seconds. And if that happens in a run, that's just very annoying and stupid. So that just removes that from the game. So that does not happen again. The stickers will stay in the game, but just the notification when they appear will not be in the game. And option six here is just everything that I just went over in one package. So it's a DLC 2 with mod setup. Yeah, it just does not include the old timer fix. We only need the first timer fix. So for the quality of life patches, enable shaders on demand is literally just a completely free performance boost. Though there's like no reason why you wouldn't want this. And eight enables uh, automatic text mesh. It's called scroll meshing, which is a misleading name, but it's an automatic text meshing bind. So that will add that into the game. There's more setup you will want to do than that, especially if you're on controller. So it's recommended you watch uh, the rebinding video, which covers fully how to set up the text mesh. Uh, add helpful commands, add some uh, practice tools commands. You'll want to watch my practice tools uh, video. You'll just add a few commands there that are in that video automatically for you. And zero, you don't have to worry about this for this patch, but if you're on a Vanessa's Curse patch, then you might probably want that you're doing runs there. For performance tweaks, if your computer's a bit uh, bad at running the game, you can decrease texture resolutions and decrease them even more with option B, or bring them back to normal with C. And Vulcan is an interesting uh, performance booster. It can boost your performance very significantly. It can decrease your load times, but it comes with, uh, with a price attached to it. And that is, uh, when you load into a level, it's going to lag spike really bad. But that will only happen once per level since you, after you install it. And that will never happen again. So, just every map that you go into will lag pretty badly, but only once. And then never again. So, 
if your computer's struggling with the game, that's definitely worth trying out. I personally have a, a pretty good PC, and I still use this just because of the performance boost. I really like that. But an uh, important thing to keep in mind if you're using Welcon, you will want to go to Steam and go into the settings here and go down to shader pre-caching and turn that off. You do not want that on because that will mess with uh, the Vulkan that you're uh, using from this thing. So you want to turn off the Steam Vulkan. Just make sure that's off, otherwise it's just not going to work correctly. And you can also uninstall Vulkan from the same window if you're uh, not enjoying it. Alright, so for the option that you want for DLC 2 with mods is 6. You're going to hit 6. And that's going to do a lot of patches for you. So just let it do that. And there it is. It's done. And you will also want 7. This is just a free performance boost. And you will also want 8, although keep in mind you will want to watch my rebinding video to finish setup for this. This just gets us sorted. And you might want 9, but you will also want to watch my practice tools video. So basically the only essentials are 6 and then 7 for a free performance boost. And when you're done messing with us, you can just close it. And you can go ahead and open your game to verify some of the things that worked. You want to make sure you open it with a shortcut, of course, since the button here in Steam is just going to open current patch. Well, you want to play on the down patch version. All right. So in here, you're going to want to go to your settings your game settings and turn on the speedrun timer and turn on the skip cutscenes and you want to go and create a new save and just hold forward and you'll want to notice on the timer that if you gain control start moving at like four seconds like here that means the timer fix worked if you gain control at like five or even later then the timer fix did not work and additionally you can test uh, boop the default uh, key on keyboard is F. If you jump in the air with spacebar and then do a boop while you're still in the air and Hatkit does the animation, that means the boop uh, patch also worked. And those are the two most important things, so you're probably good to go if you got those two things. Alright, real quick, something I forgot to mention. You can have a save file that has everything in the game unlocked just for easy access to practice whatever you want. And it's in the speedrun utilities up. You want to go into the saves and find DLC2 Hondo. And in your installation under Hat and Time Game, there should be a save data folder. If you don't have this folder, you can create it. Just make sure it's spelled and capitalized correctly. And then you just go ahead and you drag that DLC2 Hondo file in there. And yeah, that should be everything.